And just like that, we're back, guys. What's up? How's it going, Mark? 408. I was just in America this morning. It was awesome. Picked up some some cleaning stuff, some bit of everything. Anyways, I'm at Princess Auto. I gotta pick up some like a sprayer thing so I can use my cleaning stuff on my side by side because I'm testing new stuff out. I'm excited for it. So let's see what they got for us. What do we need today? Hmm. Oh yeah. Definitely another hose. I got one last time, but it's a little short. Yeah, this is what I'm looking for. All right, I think that's it. Thank you, Princess Auto. All right, we're good to go. Stuff. And back at the house. I probably should have started the video actually this morning when I went to Port Huron, but I wasn't really planning on filming a video today until I got back to London. And I'm like, yeah, I'll just start a video. So, anyways, this is the stuff I picked up. We met this guy when we were in Arkansas. Blake had all those overheating issues. We could not figure it out. We tried a million different things. Um, he was using like carb cleaner, AC cleaner, every different cleaner. You can buy at the hardware store and <clears throat> to put in his rad. Sorry, got a bubble. Um, Cause the Polaris rads are pancake together with the intercooler, which doesn't make much sense. So tons of overheating issues. Anyways, we rinsed uh, through basically about six times with the Pro Glow. And like every time it would be like this black coming out and then we'd wash it till it was clean, spray it down again this black coming out. So this stuff, absolutely incredible. I don't just, you know, get products and vouch for them. I like to use them, make sure they work, and then, then I will vouch for them. So I'm gonna wash some Maverick off today, hoping to sell it this week. It's not actually that dirty, but I uh, went down a gravel road with it. And, and that stuff will take off like all this stuff on the inside and it's safe too. Like it's not gonna, it's not hard on your suspension or anything, so. I just got this thing doing the balancing act right now. I think it's actually kind of wedged up against the Maverick. So I'm hoping to change the gears in it because it's uh, it's a lot of bottom end, but not a lot of top speeds. So I want more top speed on the water so I can wheelie longer and it just doesn't rev as high. So anyways, this is a 22 and a 51. I don't know if you guys have ever messed around with snowmobile gears. Uh, this is a 2018 600 RS from Skidoo. And uh, yeah, so I'm... I'm hoping to change the top top gear to get uh, some more mileage. So we'll wait. I'm just waiting to hear back from the dealership, see what they say, but what gear I should use. But let's over, head over to the barn, test out this uh, this new Pro Glow. Let's do this thing, purr. She's still for sale if anyone wants it. Only street legal Maverick X3 in Ontario. Let's go. All right, here we go, the old Pro Glow. So I thought it came with a scoop. I don't know if it got buried in transit, so I'm just gonna use a paint cap. So one of these buckets, it's not very big, like, you know, it's only about a foot high. One bucket will do a 140, 157 gallons. So 157 of these. So this bucket is gonna last me a few years and uh, it just looks like laundry detergent. So we'll just take a scoop out. Good enough, pour it in there. We'll fill our water up and uh, see if we can get this thing clean. So I always jack it up a tree because all the dirt sits on the skid plate at the bottom. So if you jack it up a tree or something, then all the dirt will drain out the back. So pro tip of the day. Let's test her out. So I'll rinse the uh, dirt off at first, then I'll spray it on and we'll go from there. Spray tab, just soak her down. Especially the rad too. Make sure you always fill your rad full of stuff. Get her right cleaned out. Get all that stuff underneath, she'll clean that out too. Beauty. So I did a once over, sprayed her down. I just did another one just because this thing hasn't really had a full on wash in a while. So I'll probably do it three times just to give her a good solid coat 
and the more you use it the better or the easier it is to wash the next time so get a good wash on her She's looking fresh. Whew. That was a solid wash. It was definitely due for one, but uh, might head down the track, start grooming it. I think it's time. <sighs> Guess I should wash my truck. Um, well, I was gonna try and till the track and maybe cut some lawn, but everything apparently is empty and we just got a new diesel tank and it's empty too, so. Guess I'll go do something else <laughs> until tomorrow. That is ridiculous. If anyone is wondering, $1.89 per liter is about $7 per gallon. $2.20 a liter for 94. It's gonna add up quick. No, no. You good girl? Yeah, you got a car wash, then go to the farm and see if we can wreck some stuff. Just got some super expensive premium. $2.25 a liter. All right, let's get this thing washed. Sometimes I like washing it in town a little better. Sometimes it's a little easier than I don't have to drag the pressure washer out and whatnot. Oh yeah, it's not gonna rain for a week, so I figured why not. Every time I wash it, it always rains that day or the next day. Let's make this thing look good. Then we'll head down the track and go have some fun. We got the speed dog, she's at her favorite place. Loves being at the track, finding stinky stuff to roll in, pee on everything. Coming up, yeah, Good girl. Probably run right in front of me as she usually does. Yeah, there she goes. All right, let's see what shenanigans we can get into here. No, no. Okay, so someone clipped you? Well, I don't know. I just discovered that it's kind of like Something almost like a tire of a bigger vehicle or something is brushed against it, but this car's getting so old. Like. What do you What do you guys think happened? What are your predictions? It's right on the front driver's side wheel wheel well here, and it's kind of scratched. There's no in here. There's no dents though. No, just a weird. It's scratch. like a brushing, a yeah. brushing against the car. Jeez. But this thing's getting so old. It's time to get rid of it. I've gone through like four trucks now. I know. I know. <laughs> but you know, I got a brand new engine. Oh this yeah, thing blew up, so they gave me a brand new engine for free. Well, so, it's because you got heavy feet. I know. You're hard on things. I know. You're harder than me on cars. Well, I don't know. <laughs> they gave me a brand new engine, so I got to get the use out of it. I've never blown up a turbo before. And you know this thing. You beat getting, me. It's getting so old that just about everything's been replaced on the car. So why should I get rid of it? Didn't you? Didn't you blow the turbo at like a hundred thousand? Uh yeah, it was under a hundred k. No, wait a minute. Or maybe it was just over. It was like uh, 120. It was like 140K, which is what? Around 100,000 miles? Uh, like it's that. like 90,000 miles. Because yeah. so it's 1.6, isn't it? It wasn't it? even 100,000 miles on the vehicle. Wow. And it blew up. These dang Kias, I tell you. Oh, well, thank God you got the five-year warranty. Yeah. You had to fight for it, though, didn't you? Oh, well, well, I did. I threatened to tell my story on Facebook. <laughs> and within 10 minutes, Kia had called the dealership back and said, you know, we'll replace it for free. Beauty. And you got a new engine too? That's the new engine. I mean, they would replace New it engine and new turbo. Free. Yeah, like the whole assembly, right? Cool. For free. Sweet. All right. Well, we got a Ford Escape over there that we've jumped three times and it still starts. So we're either going to try and blow up the engine today or just completely roast off the tires. I know it still starts. I don't know if it moves. So we're going to go find out. All right. I brought the null bear today. She was itching to get out, so she's barking at all the neighbors walking by. Right, Nala? One job. Don't roll in shit. <laughs> so you got to charge the battery with that boost thing? So I use the NOCO as a, it's just a booster. You can run it off it, but it's more, it's all amperage, right? Uh -huh. So it's it's got that first kick to start it, but uh -huh. like last time, I can run it for about five minutes and then it kills it because... It's more about the mega boost, right? Yep. Oh, I did one job. Actually, it said don't roll in poo, and she went in the she went in the puddle. So, 
But yes, this thing has been jumped, well, about two and a half times. Two times it cleared this, and then the last time it kind of flew off the edge here, nailed that, you know, did a flip barrel roll thingy mid jigger and Mark, it looks like your side airbag curtains have popped already. That was the first time. And what about the, the no exterior? no front airbags? I guess you have to hit something with the front for it to. Be and I right. think you have to actually be sitting in the seat. Wow. I, I feel like it's got a sensor in there. Okay. But yes, like like this thing has definitely <laughs> hit the front. So I don't know why those airbags haven't gone off yet. But no, no, it's gone. See ya. But yes, this is the damage, if anyone's wondering. So they're all off the rim except this one, but that one's flat anyway. And the rad still works? Rad still works, I think. Oh my God. <laughs> it's funny, I literally just cleaned everything up right before I did this, and then this happened. <laughs> oh, I cleaned up all the plastic over there too. But All right, let's see if this thing starts and uh, gets her going. It's funny, some guy messaged me, he wanted the tailgate. I don't think he'll want that anymore. Anyways, we got one. We got one more over there. Well, there's a side door panel still in Yeah. There. You got a rag, we got some muscal bug spray, half a muffler. I'm sure there's some shrapnel in there. All right, let's fire it up. Okay, what's happening then, Mark? Okay, I'm gonna start it, I'm gonna try and move it, and if nothing really happens, I'm just gonna hold it right to the wood until either I get smoked out, you get smoked out, or no, I get smoked out. Okay. Which way is the wind going today? We don't wanna smoke you out again. <laughs> I know, I can smell that on my clothes for the next two hours. Oh, yeah. I know. All I could smell was the burnt clutch. Yeah. I think that's worse than the smoke. Oh, Hopefully horrible. there's nothing living in here. Old Dirty Mike and the boys. All right, where's our keys here? Got too many floors. Look at that. Oh my God. Hey, good old Ford escapes. Sounds like she's straight pipe now too. And you've tried to kill this thing and it still survives. It won't die. Don't watch the dog. the battery booster on is that okay smoke but I think it's over here. Well there could be the smoke from the tire oh, I think. Yeah. So there's a bunch of water in the tire as you can see and with the burnout it's bubbling. It's boiling away. Yeah but it was getting quite hot so all right here's the plan. I think we got about 15 minutes here so I'm gonna grab the Yankum we'll tip it up on its side drain the oil out real quick 
and then wide open until it seizes. So that's how you blow up the engine? Yeah. Drain the oil. Um, obviously, like if our rad was still working, you could lift it up and just hold it wide open. Let it overheat? Yeah, but usually it just shuts off. So I like to take the oil out of it and see when it seizes. Okay. Does anyone else's dog do this? Just chow on grass all day? Uh, that's going to make her sick, isn't it? <laughs> Maybe. We'll probably go puke though. Well, they do that when they need to get sick, like throw up, right? She just does that because she's bored. <laughs> oh, really? She had a full meal already today. And then she'll go chew on grass. Uh oh. All right. Uh, yeah, I'll go grab the rope and we'll keep going here. Okay, so what's happening now? So I'm just grabbing the Yankum rope. My big tow rope. Grabbing some. My Princess Auto socket set. I think you live at Princess Auto, Mark. I pretty much live at Princess Auto. Yes. You got good credit there, right? Yeah, I got good credit, yeah. They like me, so it comes in handy. Um, so basically, yeah, I take the Yankum rope. This thing's rated for, I believe, 18,000 pounds. Um, it's absolutely amazing. It's a stretch rope, so literally I can hook it up, drive full blast away, and I'll be in the truck and it, like, I barely even jerk. So, and it won't break the rope? No, no. So it's very safe. So I've pulled a, a 65,000 pound semi truck with this 18,000 pound rope. Wow. And no problem. Everybody should have one of those. In Everyone the needs one of these. Yeah. So basically, yeah, I'll tip it up. I'll uh, just drain the oil into this bucket. <clears throat> then I store it in a barrel. And then basically, yeah, we'll fire it right up. So environmentally friendly. You don't pour the oil no, out no, you the don't want to ground. pour it on the ground or anything. Uh, Look at Nola here. What's she doing now? Oh my goodness. <laughs> It's funny, she used to hate water until she came to the farm, and now she just hangs out in the river. I'd rather hang out in the river, though, because it's a bit cleaner than the, the old mud puddle <laughs> over there. Nala, come on. Get and how many there. times has she found the cow poop? Oh, frick, probably six, six or seven. And what do you have to do then? I give her the hose. I hose her down, give her some shampoo. Give her the hose and hold your nose. Yeah, and then I make her run as far as possible to dry off. So. Okay. And then I usually put her in her little kennel for the night because she... She smells like wet dog, so. Yeah. All right, I'll get everything set up and then we'll get her going here. So now what's the idea of tipping her up on her side? Well, I don't like to tip it all the way over, but I take the drain bolt out and, and uh, drain the oil. Ah, so it's just for draining the oil? Yeah, and I okay. got a nice little seat here. Okay. Yeah. Now let's supervise it. Oh, no, you oh look, she got bird burrs all over her. Uh, oh my goodness. The worst is when she gets them in her tail. That's how they invented Velcro. Really? Somebody looked at this under a microscope and saw little hooks in it. Oh. <laughs> and that's when they invented Velcro. You're, you invented the Velcro. <laughs> Thanks, she's in trouble now. All right, let's drain the oil out. Okay, where's the wind going? The wind's going that way, so maybe stand in front. Uh, my eye is very really itchy. Um, yeah, the oil is out of it. I don't need to tip it up anymore, obviously, and uh, let's see what happens. And Noah is full of birds. I'm gonna figure out this damn air airbag. <laughs> So what's happening? Because there's no more oil in it, you've seized it already? No, no, no. Bad connection? Yeah. I forgot to turn, hit the party button. We okay. gotta hit the party button. <laughs> okay. The fun button. There we go. engine blows up? That's, well, that's how it seizes. See? It's seized. It's seized tight. That's it. I've never seen that before, Mark. First time. Thank you. It's not that exciting. <laughs> but, uh, 
You know, it was more exciting when I was on the highway and my engine blew up. I know. In the Kia you, over there. Too bad you were filming it, eh? I know. Uh, like I heard like a bang. Oh, and, and it, it, the car just like, jumped as it was going. Yeah. Did it lock and, up? Uh, and then, no, it didn't lock up. It just, the power went down and down and down. And then finally I had to coast onto a uh, off ramp. Under the side this is four right o'clock in the morning. She's trying to get to I was the on the way to Detroit that. for a, a flight to, uh, uh, you know, Colorado. Yeah. Because it was a ski trip, right? <laughs> And of course that happens. Yeah, so we got a bit of smoke coming out there. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's a couple different ways you can do it. You can jack it up too, and I could have put it in drive. Um, usually we'll make bets on how long it'll last. They say though, the faster it seizes, the better the engine is, because it's still very, very tight in there. It's not very loose, because I've had engines go 10 minutes. Oh, wow. I remember uh, the Thorndale Ferry used to do it, and they had an F-350. Drain the oil out. The fire department was there, of course. And people, you can make bets on how long it would go. Hour and a half. Oh my they god! Said the whole engine block was glowing. <laughs> so, Mark, you get all these vehicles for two or three hundred bucks, and you do all this crazy stuff with it. Yeah. Shouldn't you save the engine and, and pull the engine out and sell it to somebody? Do you have the time to pull the engine? No. Out? Well, I wouldn't I. even know how to do yeah, it. Yeah, I could make a lot more money doing other stuff than you know. This would take me. Well, I've never even done it, but probably you know ten. 10 hours so ah okay it's like i can i could keep them part them out you know become a scrap yard guy but i have a lot more fun doing this stuff and uh, it gives me more time to make content for you guys so honestly i get them and make a few videos i'm happy i got endless content for life you guys are happy you know if the scrap yard guy wants to pull parts off that's fine but and what could you even get for an engine when you pull it out oh. like this just a thousand bucks so that's it it's just yeah. not worth it no exactly like there's plus there's scrap yards in london that you can go pick through thousands of thousands of cars and they'll do it for you yeah so like you know i could but would you want to see a thousand cars down here because <laughs> no. i don't want to. i don't even like to see all these cars down <laughs> i here. already have too many cars well here, and so. i tell mark you know hide them behind these hills because I, I don't want to see them from the I house need to over make there this pile higher and then i can I know. and then i can hide it back. you know i don't want to look at all i don't want to look at a scrap yard from the house <laughs> when i'm in my office there right? uh, hey my record was 15 cars one year yeah i know but <laughs> anyways thank you guys for watching as per usual check out the merch store below we got uh some exclusive sweaters and uh, merch kits we're only printing 25 of this sweater so and we've already sold a bunch so make sure you check that out and uh, for all giveaways a little pop-up will appear and you just have to enter your email and whatnot so thank you guys again thank you dad for helping out thank you nala for getting covered in mud and burrs and uh thank you ford for just being awesome sorry for blowing up all your engines maybe hire me as a crash test guy sometime <laughs> we'll see you later